That would be me. Look who we're hanging with. Brian O'Halloran. Jason David Frank. Humberto Ramos. Please do not change channel. Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show. I'm G.W. Pomacher, and we are here at Space Coast Book Lovers all weekend long. And right now, we get to hang out with an old friend. We get to hang out with Linda Zippity Zerns. Yes. Hello. Welcome back. Hey there. How are you? You know how I am. I do. We follow you <laughs> online. We there, stalk her. I don't even need we to tell you. We follow her around. At last year, she had <laughs> pajamas, goats, and it was, there was a it thing. Was good. It was good. It was a good one. Um, you have another book out. I do. I yes. have a brand new. I'm a multi-genre author, which is a problem in and of itself because it's, it's you know, everybody is either romance or they're, you know, horror or whatever. And I have people say to me, what do you write? And I, write, I say yes. Books. I say yes. <laughs> and so I have just my first, um, let me get it right, contemporary, rural, which is hard for me to say, romance. Fantasy. Contemporary. Rural Contemporary. romance fantasy. Not urban fantasy. True. Rural. Yes. <laughs> yes. Fantasy. Um, that's, that's, that's a mouthful. I know. It's easier to say books. I, uh, what do yes. you write? Books. Yes. Yes. That's right. <laughs> she writes. Um, okay, so uh, that is, again, like you said, you're a multi-genre yes. uh, writer. Um, but you, you're just coming off of Prepper Fiction. Yes. And you have, uh, we've got um, Beyond the Strand Line. Yes. Following the Strand Line. Absolutely. And then um, we've got the short stories. Yes. Yes. Tie-ins. The tie-ins, that's right. So from there, from this kind of dystopian, um, futuristic, near futuristic. Near yeah. future. Near I like future. that you said yeah. near future because people think dystopian and they immediately go to Hunger Games or something like that. Oh, yeah. I think a thousand no years lasers, from now. That's no right. lasers. That's no, right. no tracker jackers. We just have it would be real. Really in, in Linda's world, if there were <laughs> lasers, it would be a bad day because everybody would be running around going, <laughs> nothing works. <laughs> it so would be. Um, from there yes. over to a contemporary romance setting. Yes. Um, how did you, as a writer, how did you find the transition? Was, I, it, was it easier for you? Was it harder for you? I love good story. I, I, genre to me is, I think it's limiting. I think that too often we pigeonhole these stories and books, and that's partly because of the the way we have to sell them. Yes. But I love story. I, You know what? People ask me what I love, and I say a good story. I don't care if it's a Western. I don't care if it's... If it's horror, if it's well written, well, oh my and the gosh, hum human let beings me have been it. sitting around the campfire for right? a million years telling <laughs> stories. Yes. It's all about a good yarn. Yes. And um, whether it's a, whether it's romance or it's right. it's a dystopian future or it's a science fiction or uh, there's a human truth under right. there somewhere. It's about people and how we interact with one another. I, I love it. I love the way you're saying that because it, essentially that is what story is. It is characters, it is people, and how they respond to whatever setting you put them in. And they do. <laughs> and they do. And they do. Wow. Um, so, the um, as a storyteller, um, one of the things that you hit on really, really well is that you know the way we sell our books is right. you know that's how we use genre we use you know all of yes. these little things to classify and yes. categorize um, if you're out there and you're an artist all of those things are necessary when you're selling your books right but the artist in you when you sit behind the keyboard leave all of that stuff at the door and right. tell a good story i wish it was i wish it was easier to do the marketing but honestly i can't I can't not to do it, and I know that that's the double negative, and I know that that is, means I do it. Yes, we can, we, that's exactly right. We can't not do it if we don't. We can't not do it. But if we, <laughs> if we were left to our own devices, right. it would just be at the keyboard, right. making, building worlds, just, building yes. you know, places. And that's, and that's the, the appeal to the fantasy um, genre anyway, is that you are not limited by um, the realities of, of reality. Now, you, now, now, you said rural fantasy. Yes. Okay. Um, I, I think 
tons and tons of readers are familiar with urban fantasies. Yes. Um, because just about everything people write, they always love to dive into the middle of you know New York yeah. or L.A. And go to or, the pizza joint. That's right. Sure. Um, um, that you wrote, you're, you live in rural Florida. I you love it in rural Florida. I grew up there. That's right. So um, what for you is a challenge of bringing your experience in rural America in, onto the page? On, honestly, I, I'm a native Floridian, and I find Florida magical. I think it is. I think there is fantasy here anyway. Yes, because none of us should actually live here. The natural environment of Florida <laughs> is not designed it's for us. It's hostile. It People is. did not settle here because of the mosquitoes. No, if it, it wasn't was for <laughs> central air, population of Florida would still be six. And I, but I absolutely adore my state, and I adore the idea that the swamps and the jungle you imagine, and the humidity. You imagine the late nineteen forties, early nineteen fifties. Walt Disney flies into uh, Florida and says, I think I'll build a tourist thing here. My, what yeah. was he thinking? I don't know, because my grandfather thought Swamp it would land sink. and orchards. He and thought it would sink. Yeah. <laughs> and he just like looked over and went, look, I see a castle. I'm like, yeah, well, it's going down. It's, you know, it's uh, an amazing. But, but you go to Disney, and seriously, it's the same. It's our conversation. I look around, and I go, this is one man's dream. This is one man's dream. dream. And no limitations. No genre. He he was when he started to make his movies. He literally created the art. Yes, and that's I think that's see, I have goosebumps. That is what we're that's this is goosebump that making. Is, that's the dream. That's the dream <laughs> yes. for a creator yes. is to be able to create right. without limitations. The limitations and barriers right. and all of the things we've been taught have to hold us back. Of course, that can be a challenge. Always. <laughs> It's not a challenge to create this stuff, it's a challenge to sell it afterwards. It's a challenge to communicate yes. that. And I think, um, like I said, fantasy for me is a natural, a natural next step because um, when you talk about dystopian, it is an imaginary world. And when you talk about fantasy, it is obviously uh, an imaginary world. But when you have, um, when you have contemporary fantasy, it's, the, it's our world touching an unreal fantastical world. A fantastical yeah. world. Perfectly and said. So what's great about that, though, is that at the heart of every fantasy is a person. Yes. And our that, our, our yeah. protagonist can be a group, our protagonist. Absolutely. And, and whether you're Tolkien writing these fa yes. fantastical creatures, at their heart, they're people. We love Frodo. We do. We love we do. those characters. Anybody with feet that hairy has to be successful, <laughs> eventually. <laughs> you bet. It is. Um, okay, so writing the new book, yes. okay, um, as you got going, and again, off your norm, you're yes. in a new, a new, you're, you're, it's you're a a new, new thing. What yeah. was that moment, kind of that, aha, this is awesome, this is, this is, I love this story. When did you reach that point in the book? Because it's I, never the first page, because the first page is like, oh my God, what am I going to write? <laughs> and the last page is like, yes, look what I wrote. I, Somewhere in the middle okay, there. Okay, okay, so here's how it works. Um, <laughs> so this story is um, the, the idea of, of griffins and, and uh, you, know, unre you know, not real characters. I have a griffin, um, and there's a, there's a Latin phrase, and if I was very hip and cool, I'd be able to tell it to you, but I can't, it's in the book. Um, but there's a Latin phrase. <laughs> there's a Latin phrase that, available on that Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> there's a Latin phrase in the book that is that literally translated says, "When griffins mate with horses," which is a euphemism for impossible, fantastic love. See, griffins and horses are bitter enemies, but in this story, they are. How do we get hippogriffs? See, that's... Hippogriffs. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. I like it. So, it's an impossible love story. Fantastic. Which, ooh, see? Yes, exciting. Yes, that is. That's I know! <laughs> you know, we, you can break every story down to, again, those human truths. Yep. And one of the most significant is our need to love to and love to be loved. and be loved. And uh, whether... Whether you're chasing a dragon or whether right. you're, there's gonna, there's always going to be that part of you right. that needs to feel uh, wanted and connected to right. another human being, and we watch these guys out here do it all the time with their with the romance sure. novels and things like that. Sure, um, it is another thing to sit down and and write that connection. Right, and it's an amazing thing. And pull it off and make it be something that is relatable to to everyone. Mm -hmm. That that is that's it's it's exciting. 
It is. Now you've been you've been doing a lot more speaking and a lot more stuff yeah, these days. Yeah. yeah. How's I'm, that going? I'm out there, man. Yeah. I'm out there. We, so, we, we told you that two years ago, <laughs> folks. She's out there. So I, I went to, um, <laughs> so back to the dystopian books, I went to a heritage festival in North Carolina. I met my audience, the prepper, hardcore preppers. They came into that festival and I, we did, my girlfriend and I did recipes or food that wow. was mentioned in the books. We did classes. We gave nice. them samples and I sold out. Awesome. That's right. Darn right. That's right. <laughs> Best two words as an artist. Sold out. Sold out. <laughs> that is fantastic. Yeah, so that, again, connecting with your audience is important. I'm not. I'm not downplaying that. But no, um, no, no. They're you, out there. They are out that's there. That's right. You just have to find them. It, like look left, look right, and then go digging. Yes. You and will they, find and you'll them. Find, you'll find people. Now, who love you know, what you do. You now have. Uh, when we first talked, we had following the Stranlund. Yes. And then uh, beyond the strand line, beyond no, the other one, beyond, beyond and following. then following, yes. um, and then we have the short stories. Yes. Okay. Um, what was the most unusual tidbit that you picked up during the research? Oh my gosh! Um, as far you know, honestly, because I learned so much I diving know. into yesterday. Honestly, tomorrow. with with the prepper dystopian uh, genre, everyone has even people. I mean, we hurricane season is just you know, yay! It's hurricane season now. We're all worried about crisis and catastrophe. Yeah. Um, and everyone has this fantasy that they're going to go off and live in a cave and be totally isolated and let the world burn all around them. When in essence, that is not the reality. If you do the research, if you if you research Colombia and their collapse, if you research Venezuela and their collapse, if you research Sarajevo and all of those places, you find that people who isolated themselves were the first to die. Yeah. And then the people that actually survived the catastrophe and the chaos are those that band together, have each other's backs, well, and we are a communal we, species. It, always, we need always, community. and forever. So that fantasy, I, that was very interesting to me because, of course, I had that fantasy too. And then when I realized that, really and truly, it's about creating a village, mm -hmm. and without the village, we are the lone, lone well, people. Well, there's so many things that and we as individuals simply can't do. No. We need, it, 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 I might be no. a good fisherman, but that guy's right. a good hunter, and that right. person's a good grower, and right. that person is. We need this. Yeah. I mean, we all have special gifts. But that, doesn't that go back to the I don't whole know. I don't know. You and I, though, we're, we're both writers. <laughs> what are they going to have us do? I don't do? know. I'm pretty sure. What are they going to make us do? I don't know. I'm afraid. Yeah. I'm afraid. I'm afraid that I'll be will, like in the will, soup pot. You know? We will. No, no, no. <laughs> Put that one in we the want, soup pot. In case of emergency, remember, <laughs> Linda and Garrett are both, we will chronicle the journey. We can talk. You need us. <laughs> we can talk really. a lot. Just ask us. We'll tell you. You need us. <laughs> um, wow, you got a lot of stuff going on. I do. New book out, do. contemporary ur rural, 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 rural romance, uh, fantasy, fantasy romance. romance. Contemporary rural <laughs> fantasy romance. It's a lot of words. She she set was able magical to magical Florida. It's a magical place. It is. It is. <laughs> um, you need, if you haven't been to Florida, why? Uh, especially for those people in the Northeast who just got done with winter like <laughs> oh in my, May. Like, like yesterday. Yeah, it's in, wow. Right. Um, we just got back from Megacon Orlando. Oh, I saw that. And You guys are amazing. A, amazing bunch of artistic, you know, just creators of all, man, it was yeah. fantastic. I, it's it's like we, doing the conventions and the conference, we found our tribe. Right. Exactly. We did. And, and you feed, and, and they feed you, and you, you, you can... Sometimes you can literally, by the way, because we're writers. <laughs> you, can, you can feel that energy, and, and it's, it's the way I felt, you know, talking to preppers and talking to people. I didn't have to explain prepper fiction to. Imagine I that. I didn't have to explain it, and they knew, and they just, they, I was young adult, and they went, can I hand this to my 13-year-old? I said, absolutely, and you need both books. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, it was fabulous. That is fantastic. She's going to make us shut up. She does that every time we get going. <laughs> but we're we having can. a moment here. <laughs> All right, fine. We will say thank you to our partners and friends at Some Unique Magazine, Famous Faces and Funnies, Off the Chain Radio with author Yvonne Mason. We miss Yvonne this weekend. She couldn't oh. be here. Um, with us. So, uh, Space Coast Comics, our Asylum Convention Entertainment Services, our great friends over at Krypton Radio, our fantastic friends over at Megacon and Fan Expo, and of course, the fantastic creators here at Space Coast Book Lovers. We have been hanging with author Linda Zern. 
check those books out. We're going to put those links down below so you Thanks. can find Linda where she's going to be, where she's going to tell you all about prepper fiction, and then you contemporary bet. urban fantasy romance. Rural. Rural. <laughs> Missed it again. So close. Missed it again. We were so close. <laughs> I was so proud of myself for getting all four <laughs> words strung together in a row. I'll come up with a better title. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can do it. I can Remember do it. Remember out there, check out Linda on the web, log on, tune in, and see who we're hanging with next.